Hi folks, right, another watercolour, simple watercolour. Okay, so wet the paper all over. This is really for basic beginners. The problem I had when uh, I tried to do all this many, many years ago was that watching it or reading from a book and seeing pictures didn't really explain what a wash was, what a graduated wash was. I'm not going to demonstrate them, I'm going to paint a picture, but I'm going to use all those uh, techniques. Um, you know, I found that wetty wet watercolour is the, is the easiest to do because you don't have to work at the paper, you don't have to worry too much about cauliflowers developing. Uh, this is a this is a lovely paper, but it's it's a, the Saunders ninety pound um, hot pressed paper, which is quite smooth, very poor or so, and a lovely paper. I only do landscapes, and what I do is to get some raw sienna, which is a nice warm yellow. Make sure it's really mixed, and just go over. And the, pay, the, the water on the paper will lubricate. There we are. Now that's a sort of graduation watch. Now because the paper is tilted, by the time you get to the bottom, it's the, the paint has diluted itself and so it becomes less and less. Now I also like to put in a bit of light red. I'll tell you what my colours are in a moment. Not a lot, it's a very strong colour. So we're just into that, we're just, just wiping. There we are. Right, now, we've got a bit of cloud on that. So we'll mix into that red, we'll use that. Bit of, bit of ultramarine. There we are, look, nice blue, ultramarine blue and Payne's grey, that would be a nice cloud. Just take some of your clouds off of the paper, otherwise it looks as if you're just trying to fit things in. Okay, now no more than that. We'll, we can leave that alone. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to reclip now you don't need to stretch your paper. Just, just, just gently tug it. Get it nice and flat, and it will stay flat. Perfect. Now this stage, I had to dry the painting, and I use a hairdryer. So if you don't want to listen to the hairdryer, just mute your sound or fast forward through this bit. Okay, ready, go. Okay, don't uh, put your fingers in, in it while it's a bit damp because you'll just, you'll just lift the paint out. I'm not a lover of uh, using tissue paper to blot out skies, but you can, if that's what you want to do, there are plenty of artists, watercolourists, that use it to great effect. I'm not one of them. I like sort of impressionist skies. Now the next problem is what we're going to put underneath it. Uh, a simple landscape, so we want some trees, a bit of water maybe. So let's just start to 
using the, the large shade, I'll tell you what my colours are. Cadmium yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, Payne's grey and burnt sienna. Looking like volcanoes now. Okay, so uh, with the large hake, we'll uh, just put in a bit of landscape. So we'll have a bit of, bit of yellow and a bit of paints grey. That's a very simple very simple now you, I'm not going to cover it all I'm leaving some sparkle now we could use that for a bit of reflection I'm going to fill that bit in and we, we don't want the corners to be unpainted Right, so we'll let that dry. I'll give it a dry. Ready? Okay. Don't aim for perfection. You'll make mistakes, I make mistakes, we've made loads of them. But eventually you'll, you'll learn how to um, turn a disaster into, into a happy accident. Right, I'm now going to change to the medium hake. These are Ron Ransom hakes. Ron died a couple of years ago, very sad, but had a long life very successful in his painting endeavours. He's a hero to some, including me. All right, so let's, let's put a few bits of bush in. So, a uh, bit, bit of green. Warm it up with a bit of sienna. Uh, uh. And we'll... See, I'm going over that smudgy bit there. Okay. Now you can scrape out with your fingernail or a card into that while it's damp. Um, it's not easy on, on the quality papers. It's very easy on the, the Fabriana 130 pound. Uh, right now I'll just, uh, I'm going to put a bit, of, a bit on the horizon I think. So for the horizon we want a bit of blue. So there's our blue. A bit of blue, a bit of Payne's grey. And then we can too much water on the brush. Now the brush brushes do hold a lot of water. Just gives that the impression of distance. Cool colours recede. Warm colours come forward and well let's carry on with that that's a feather touch light as a feather look you, if you press too hard you'll get too solid a too solid a brush mark and you won't be happy Uh, we can put it a bit warmer now. Put a bit of burnt sienna in the next next one. Use all the all the brush, all the, both tips.
So we could show a bit of uh, shape to the lead if we want. But I'm making this up as I go along, I'm doodling this. But I like doodles. Okay, uh, a bit of paint grey in with that. Now, this is the interesting bit, round here. Bit of bit of uh, yellow with some sienna. Okay, it's been here. Now, foregrounds, do them quick and have done with them. And don't put too much in the foreground. When you're looking out there, you're not looking down at your feet. All right, now we'll use the rigger. A bit of dark, darkish. Warm dark is burnt sienna and either ultramarine or plains grey. How to create a reflection, look, just what you put above, put below. It doesn't have to be accurate. Well, your reflections do, like you've got to get, get them like that. But it's just a, a, an impression of detail, not say this is this and this is that. It's just, these are just marks on the paper. But, no, I've left that too long. Now, just a few greeny bits. Okay, we'll sign that. We'll put a signature on it and then a few birds. Um, I want to put a little bit of detail in, in these trees. Okay, so that'll do it. So, very little detail, a bit maybe in here. Right, birdies. Don't want them heavy, very, very light. Right, there's a little blob there. So we'll do that. Right, okay, that's it. The birds link the sky with the land. So to, to go back over it, we've got um, the sky obviously. I painted that very quickly, dried it, put in this tree here, and then put these distant trees in there. No detail, just impressions. Same with this tree here, got the shape of it. 
added a few bits of branches and twigs and stuff. Here, foreground, warmer colours come forward and just a lesson in doing reflect reflections here. Um, I don't think I'm going to put anything as mundane as a fence in. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave that. Put it in a mount and then we'll have a look and see what we've done. My tape's gone torn off wrong. Masking tape is the most useful tape going. Whoops, put that on there, that there, that there. And get them out, put that on it. So there we are, we have a, a fairly clean, simple, simple landscape. Very effective because it, it's profound simplicity. But if you do something like that, you'll be very pleased with yourself. I couldn't have done anything like that 40 odd years ago, 45 years ago, shall I say, when I first started. It took a long time to cotton on, but I, but I didn't have anybody showing me how to do it. So I hope you like that. I hope you learn something from it. And keep it simple, stupid. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. A great mnemonic. And if you remember that, your, your paintings won't be over cluttered with clutter. You can put, put buildings in if you want, like barns and things, but I just like landscape. Hope you like that, folks. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.